Hey, what is up guys? It is SilverSun here and today I'm going to be giving you guys my review on the Dragon Ball Super episode 123. Alright, now I have to say this episode was really awesome in my opinion. Not as greatly looking as um last week's episode, but definitely like a lot more like um meat and uh subject matter here as pretty much Universe 7, Universe 11, still going at it. Um Dispo's pretty much just speed, speed blitzing, uh, Frieza still kinda, but even after the last, uh, little scuffle they had, Frieza seem, seems not too worse for wear, uh, she hasn't even gone golden yet still, so, you know for a fact that he's still hiding, uh, his true power, he's still conserving it, and I feel like he could definitely take out Dispo anytime he wanted to, um, which is what I feel like he should do before Dispo does, like, I don't know, like, before he unleashes some kind of, like, crazy, like, last second power-up deal or whatever, because you never know, Dispo could get the upper hand with his speed and maybe knock Frieza off, so I feel like Frieza should just get it over with and take him out while he can, at least in my opinion, but, um, on the sidelines, we still see, um, Seventeen and Gohan still fighting Topo, and Topo's pretty much holding his own against them, um, they're trying to coordinate their attacks, but it doesn't seem to be working too much, because, they never really did it before, they never really fought before, so pretty much uh, Seventeen thinks that he should try and get Topo's attention, try to catch him off guard, and then when he's caught off guard, Gohan goes in with that, uh, with that, you know, final push, that punch or kame, Kamehameha or whatever, uh, to c catch Topo off guard, and pretty much that's what they try to do, um, Topo actually grabs Android 17's hand, and he's pretty much got him, but then Gohan's got them as well, and pretty much he fires off a Kamehameha right at them, uh, 17's blocking it, but it's pushing them back, so much so that they're about to fall off the stage, but then, uh, Topo pretty much hits 17 away, and stops them before they could fall off the arena, and that was pretty much the extent of their fight, they're still going at it, um, I feel like they probably could take care of, um, Topo, if they just do something like that again, or, you know, if they start, like, you know, coordinating their attacks a lot more effectively, I feel like they could catch them off guard, definitely outsmart them, and effectively, effectively knock them off, and same with Frieza, t to a lesser extent, all Frieza really needs to do is either go golden, or just, like, start taking it seriously, and just knock Dispo off, like, as quickly as possible, um, but now it's time for the the main event, basically, Goku, Vegeta, Jiren, and pretty much, um, after the last fight, after the last, uh, little scuffle they had last episode, pretty much, Vegeta's down and out, he's barely able to stand up anymore, um, Goku pretty much has to take up, uh, the fight with Jiren, and they're pretty much just going at it, Goku's fighting him in Super Saiyan Blue, and they're just, like, fighting each other, uh, blow for blow, almost, pretty much, um, and Goku actually gets a little strategic uh, this time around. Pretty much, he starts um, instant transmission, instant transmissioning um, around the arena. Pretty much setting these little like energy mines, like these little like energy blasts into the ground as he's fighting Jiren and pretty much dodging all his shots and stuff like that. Trying to plant these uh, energy blasts into the ground. And as soon as Jiren steps on it, it seems like you know he's pretty much done for. Well, not done for, but that that definitely should have, like, damaged him in some way. And it was pretty good if it hadn't have been for him to, you know, jump up um, after he stepped on it. Because he pretty much stepped on it. It exploded, but he was already in the air at that time. Goku was watching it on top of a pillar, pretty much spectating, seeing what the effect was. And it proved to be ineffective. Jiren's pretty much in the air. He comes down straight at Goku. Um, but Goku pretty much launches, um, these destructive discs at him, and Jiren pretty much punches them all away, and he even grabs one of them too, and he throws it down below the, uh, rocks at Goku. The pillar comes toppling down, and pretty much just hanging off the edge of the arena, and for whatever reason, Goku decides to go there to fight Jiren, and they're pretty much fighting, um, almost off the edge of the arena, and basically, whoever, like, either gets knocked off the rock, you know, is going to follow the arena, so pretty much, they're going at it, and Jiren starts, um, punching Goku really powerfully, 
and that pretty much like knocks Goku um, down. And it seems like Jiren's about to deliver the final blow, but before he can, um, the destructive this from earlier pretty much come back and they cut the rock below Jiren, um, pretty much harkening back to before the tournament when uh, Goku fought uh, Krillin and he pretty much um, tricked him and he cut like a little hole in the ground with the, the destructo disc. Um, that's pretty much what happened here, he caught Jiren off guard with the destructo disc. Um, and Jiren was actually about to blast Goku but before he could, Goku instant transmissioned uh, above him and just knocked him down along with all the rocks. And I, we all know that Goku's not the smartest fighter in the world, but still, like, I feel like um, he should have blasted the rocks. Like, that's exactly what I was thinking right after he kicked him downward. I was thinking he should blast the rocks that, that way. Um, Jiren doesn't have anything to cling on to to, you know, get him to come back into the arena. Because obviously you can't fly in this tournament. So if he were to do that, then I feel like it could have been, he could have did. He could have taken out Jiren by himself. But, I mean, that would have been anticlimactic, yeah, anticlimactic, yeah, but, I don't know, I just feel like that would have been, like, foolproof right there, like, he had him right there, but, Goku wasn't thinking that far ahead, and in turn, Jiren actually came back, jumped up from the rocks, and at this point, Jiren was not happy, he pretty much powered up even more, and he had, like, this, like, crazy, like, aura coming off of him, like, this red aura, and he pretty much starts like punching Goku, or like, rather he starts punching the air, and it's like punching Goku as well, so pretty much he's like doing the same thing that he did with his eyes, but this time with his fists, and he's pretty much just bodying Goku. Um, he actually, like before he even starts punching him, he just did one solid punch, and it like flew through a whole bunch of rocks. Like he didn't punch the rocks, he punched the air, and the force of that punch just went through a whole bunch of rocks, and Goku was pretty much just like scared at that point, he was so scared, like he detransformed he went all the way back to his base form he was in blue and he just went back to his base like he was shook and basically um Jiren started um biting Goku at that point and pretty much Goku's getting pretty beat up he's pretty tired uh almost on his last leg but he's not going to give up and neither is Vegeta because Vegeta pretty much comes in here at the last few minutes of this episode and him and Goku pretty much uh come together and they start powering up um, you know, as a last resort, basically, Goku transforms into Kaioken, um, blue form, and pretty much Vegeta's, um, thinking back to what Kaba, or what he said to Kaba, pretty much saying like that he's gonna revive their universe with the Super Dragon Balls, that's why he needs, um, to win this tournament, it means a lot to him, and so pretty much, he just lets that, um, fuel his, uh, his power, and in turn, he pretty much broke through his shell, and he transformed into this, like, um, I don't know what you call it, like, Limit Breaker form, or, I don't know, they weren't really specific on the name, but, um, but pretty much he powered up, and he, he had, like, this, like, sparkly, like, blue kind of aura, like, it was basically kind of Super Saiyan blue, just, like, a little different, like, his eyes looked a little bit, um, more different, like, different coloring and stuff like that, um, a little bit more bulky, and pretty much he was ready, him and Goku, and they pretty much charged that Jiren, and they were pretty much trying to coordinate their attacks, but it wasn't quite working out for them, um, it seemed like, like, well, not like that, but you think it wouldn't work well, because, you know, you gotta coordinate your attacks in order, you know, to catch the opponent off guard and stuff like that, um, or at least, you know, uh, fight him effectively, but because of that, because they weren't, uh, fighting cohesively, that was pretty much throwing Jiren off, and they managed to, um, push him back a bit, so pretty much, um, that's where the episode ends, basically, Goku Vegeta powered up to the max, more or less, Goku still, I mean, if worse comes to worse, Goku still got Ultra Instinct, you know, in his back pocket, so he could do that, um, if he gets pushed far enough, um, Frieza could still go golden, no one's got ringed out just yet, Jiren almost did, Topo almost did, uh, but that didn't really plan out the way they had hoped for, but, yeah, I feel like, um, Universe 7 has got this, like, like, they got the, um, the right number, like, Universe 11's 3, and Universe 7's, like, 5, so pretty much, um, they got it, like, if, um, if Frieza could just take care of Dispo, um, meet up with Seventeen and go on, 
they could just wreck Topo, I feel like, or at least catch him off guard and just knock him out. And then all of them just come together and take down Jiren together. Because at this point, I feel like Dispo isn't much of a challenge. I mean, yeah, he's fast, but that's kind of it. Um, Frieza hasn't even gone golden yet, and he's still, like, able to, like, kind of keep up with them and stuff like that. He's not really taking too much damage from him, so I feel like Frieza could definitely take care of him, no sweat. Uh, Topo might be a bit of a bigger challenge, and then Jiren's obviously going to be the biggest challenge for them. But we'll just see how all that plays out uh, in these coming episodes. I think they said it was like seven minutes left. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think, I think, I haven't really been like keeping track of it, but I feel like um, with, with each passing episode, it's like each minute goes by. So like one episode um, down, one minute goes by, another episode goes by, another minute goes by, and there's pretty much seven minutes left. So I feel like seven or more episodes left for the tournament arc uh unless there's something else after all of this and maybe you know who knows but overall i thought this episode was pretty cool uh it was nice to see vegeta you know finally get some uh more shine actually with that new transformation he got hopefully it gets put to good use against jiren hopefully he doesn't get bodied too badly um and i i don't know i really want vegeta to win this like because i feel like he has more um at stake here, he has something to fight for rather than everyone else. Like we already know what Frieza would possibly wish for, but like everyone else, well, Seventeen said like he was gonna like wish for like a boat or money or something like that. I I can't really remember specifically, but I mean that's nice and all, but like I don't know, like that's I don't want to say he's wasting a wish, but like I don't know, I I don't know. We can only imagine what um what the outcome of this tournament could be. Uh, animation and art, it's, uh, art's obviously not as good as, uh, last week's episode. Um, animation, about the same. Um, but yeah, that, um, decrease in the art kind of, I mean, it didn't ruin the episode at all. It picked up near the end when Vegeta transformed and stuff like that. That was pretty epic. Um, there were some good shots here and there, but overall, it was a, it was an average episode. It was okay, um, in terms of, you know, art and animation, but... Uh, everything else, like, with the, um, uh, uh, storyboarding, uh, the story, basically, like, the subjects in this episode and stuff like that, more or less the same, but just a bit more, um, interesting this time around, or if not, um, as interesting as last episodes, you know, it still got me pretty hyped, and I can't wait to see what happens, uh, next episode, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this review, guys, uh, comment down below, Tell me what you guys thought. Uh, did you guys like this episode? Did you guys not like this episode? Let me know. And until the next one, Silver Sun is out.